Hello and welcome to Lord Lucan. To the windows, to the walls, it's 90 Day Fiancé before the 90 days. Stay tuned for some lovings. Um, <laughs> then Riley goes on tour. <laughs> this is crazy. And we're treated to some American culinary skills. I'm more of like a microwave person. Well then, a sweet home to your Alabama and a thank you for joining us. Much warmth to the beautiful people who have subscribed, and a table for two overlooking the orchard for the pinball wizards of Lucan Manor. First up, grab your granny and fling her to and fro, and you know who we're off to see. And Gino's dreaming about his perfect little day. He's on top of the world, champion of his division. He's got the wind rushing through his hat and the world at his feet. Woo! Strong finish! The break. Woo! But like life, sometimes it's easier to get carried away with the moment and you end up crashing back to reality. The break. Oh, the break. <laughs> but don't worry, everybody's okay and walks away from the ordeal. Ah, uh, that was fun. <laughs> yeah, that's what Gino said. <laughs> Gee. But tonight is no ordinary night. Okay, well, maybe it's Jasmine's little sister's birthday, but you know, no one cares about that. Gino's in serious mode. So. He may look like he's some kind of jockey for the Candyland stables, all coordinated with the ice cream shop, but he's all business. I have something here for you, Jasmine. Ah, oh, yeah, I love it when Gino's been shopping. In fact, I'd watch a whole show about Gino shopping incompetently for people. But what's he got today? It's pretty small, so Jasmine's probably quite sure it's not another fanny pack, so she tries to sound excited. What is it? Could possibly be his manhood. Well. Wow. Okay, so now you're building it up. This had better be good, Gino. Do we need a drum roll for this? I think you might like it. Possibly, yeah, if you if you can figure out how to open it. Bloody hell, do you know? That's how you work the audience for suspense. Right, drum roll. Here we go. What the hell is that? Okay, well, that bit's a ring. What happened to the box? Nothing says quality like a bit of see-through plastic. But Gino apologises for everything and gives her a ring as a promise that he'll be more attentive and thoughtful as a lover. Uh, give you more, uh... Meat? Then Gino tells Jasmine all about the wonderful things that he loves about her. All the things the counselor told us. A moving testament, I'm sure you'll agree. So Gino asks. Do you like it? She says. I do. And Gino does some sort of creepy baby talk thing. Um, oh, baby. <laughs> Disturbing. And this ignites the Colombian passions. Hey, happy birthday to you. So, where did you get that ring, Gino? You know? We didn't see you sneak off. Like a vendor selling many different things. Oh, I love Jasmine's face when she is about the ring's origin. I think she wants to know, but at the same time doesn't want to know where it came from. But she's trying to put a brave face on it before she accidentally loses this one too. So they marvel at the design which has two hearts on it. One heart represents you, and the other heart is me. Yeah. Wow, my mind's blown too. Two hearts, two of us. Woohoo! That's some crazy creativity going on there. Aww, you're romantic. I like when he's <laughs> romantic. And while I collect my mind from around the room, Gino's off to entertain the crowd with some talking. Una bolita. Una <laughs> bolita. Um. Bless him though, he's giving Spanish a shot for the first time in two and a half years. Más tarde. <laughs> I used to know the word. Yeah. I think you sound a bit mistarded too. And we land with a thump in Vietnam, where Riley's decided to get a bit crazy, seeing as he's got the city to himself. Tonight I decided that I'm going to venture out in Ho Chi Minh City. But don't worry, he's got Tom the tour guide to give him a lift on his moped. <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah, it'll be fine. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? It may only be a little compared to somewhere like the US, who have around 6,000 deaths on the road per year, but in Vietnam, it's eight and a bit thousand. The chance of dying in the US is 0.99%. In Vietnam, it's 26% or one in four. So by that rationale, if these four delightful individuals were in Vietnam, at least one of them would be doing themselves a mischief. And you know it's not going to be Dave here. He's an actual superhero, you know. You can tell by the mask. 
In Vietnam, statistically, someone on the road dies every hour. Maybe some people think they're only allowed one an hour. So if they see an accident, they think, ooh, I can drive like an absolute mentalist for the next 59 minutes. So off they go, pulling into moving traffic with no indicators or, you know, looking at stuff. And then we're off on the Midnight Express of Love. But don't worry, Riley's back to his old self and blaming himself for all the things that have gone badly. Feel bad about my reaction to things. I don't get it. He went to Vietnam to see if it hit it off. They didn't. Spectacularly. So he's going back to try again. How many times is too many? Do they just repeatedly bang their heads together? Rinse and repeat forever? Is this the relationship now? I might have been a little too sensitive within the situation. Blimey, after all that curb, I think your situation would be a bit sensitive too. And a little too sensitive. And I think all this hoochie min is going to Riley's head and he decides to pull Tom the tour guy. Have a good cigar with me because, uh, sure? yeah, I'm, I'm here by myself. And they go off to the cigar club. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, cigars, huh? If the dress code is sliders and a cheery smile, I think I'm out. But no, it's all fine. The place even does some fancy cocktails. Wow. Nice place, huh? Yeah. Ah, good old cocktail waiters. An acrobatic elegance of man and liquid. No, you never look silly. And the waitress is good thanks. Okay. And while the dynamic service sets the night on fire, Riley makes a confession. I don't know, I don't understand women here. Yeah, they're everywhere, really. He's not fussy. He'll misunderstand people anywhere. So Riley starts to bore Tom to death with his life story. I met her on an app. And dating app? Yeah. All right. He's like, really? A man from the US meets a woman using an app, you say? Flew over here after spending all your money, you say? How surprising to me. All right. But I think Tom is starting to lose the will to live. He just wanted to do the bloody tour and go home. Not have to sit here and listen to this, like, whinge all night. Okay. So my and then poor Tom drifts off into a coma as Riley shifts into second gear. So, from what I'm understanding, she would have been more accepting of that question if it came from my father. I don't know if, I, uh, if she tried to explain that to me, and I just wasn't hearing it because I was so upset with her tone to me. Sweet. So, Tom says something about egos. Our egos. And something about tempers. Cannot control our temper. And then it's a kind of sad. Yeah, yeah. sad. Then swings it all around and says that Riley should... Apologize sincerely. I wonder if Tom had become so bored of listening that he played that prank that people do when they're asked for directions. It's like when someone asks you where something is and you could say, take a left, then a second right. But no, you give him a bit of the old left right second left left by the cow and under the Wilton cabbage business. I think this is what Tom is doing. Plus he'll get paid loads more if Riley sticks around and uses them more. I came here tonight to hear the crowd go. Ah. And then he tries to take a drink and not look like he totally forgot that the glasses are half the size. I need to rethink my approach when it comes to Violet. And he and Tom enjoyed their little night together. You're the, you're the best tour guy ever. <laughs> <laughs> Let's all take the night bus to England land, the home of the football team that didn't just get kicked out of the World Cup. <laughs> and here I'd like to introduce you to a new British word. You like mashed potatoes? I love mashed potatoes. Uh. Now you'll be forgiven for thinking that you heard the word potato. <laughs> oh, no, no, you silly sausage. It's not potato, a vegetable that's good for chips. It's actually potato, a vegetable that's good for chips. Potato. So today, Dempsey and Sattler <laughs> are making dinner. I'm more of like a microwave person. You don't say, Miss Ramsey. And then they have some talk about fidelity and it all got a bit boring. And when I realized I'd zoned out, this was happening. So everything's fine, you know, we don't need to worry about it. Before we go, let's look at what's happening in the next thrilling episode. Gino's taking charge. You've been a bad, bad girl. Traffic and weather is back and she's... Feeling just super confused. Me too. I thought you like went home or something. The AmandaBot 3000 meets some of Razban's friends. Hey! Yeah, nothing can go wrong there. And Christian feels a bit of straight guy remorse. For him to go on and lie about our intimacy, I feel like I've been manipulated. And Tyre is gonna meet the person that isn't the person that he thought she was. Last week, the real Carmela told me she'd be open to meeting. Well, there you have it for today, you wonderful human being. Thank you so much for joining us and spending a little time by the hearth for stories. If you liked it, please give me a little thumbs up and check out one of these delightful other video-y things. So until next time, stay beautiful, love to my three, you take care of yourself. <laughs> <laughs>